I have to take care of my body in a lot of different ways. And it sounds like a lot. It's really not. I mean, we have to eat every day. Why not make each meal count? We have to breathe every day. Why not have a breathing exercise that you can do? We have emotions every day. Why not be more aware of them? All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Wellness Cafe. Today, I'm very excited because today is our first studio version of the Wellness Cafe. Um, I'm sitting here with Lance McGowan. How are you doing, Lance? I'm doing well. How are you? Cool. And uh, we're going to be talking a lot about stress management today. Lance is an author, also a YouTuber, and you will learn so much more if you stick around. So let's uh, go ahead and jump in. Tell us a bit about your history because I know you've struggled with your own health journey and now you're helping other people um, along their health journey. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so I was born and raised in Columbus, Ohio and my dad, he actually got throat cancer when I was 10 years old and he had allergic reaction to the chemo and so he passed away when he was 47 and I was 10 years old. So that was very traumatic and I didn't want to go down his path, but I didn't know of a better way. And then my mom, she had triple bypass surgery when I was 14. And she today is on medications for blood pressure, cholesterol. She was diagnosed as pre-diabetic. And this is strange because she came from Korea where there wasn't chronic Western disease, and but standard American diet for decades and decades caused her to have some health issues. And then, so my dad's nationality is black and my mom, Korean and so I, most people think I'm like Thai or Filipino, which is cool. So I've been, you know, honorary member of those communities. But uh, yeah, so, uh, but yeah, that is kind of my health journey. And I didn't want to go down their path. But when I, I went to Ohio State for marketing and transportation. And when I graduated, I worked for PepsiCo for about seven years. So I saw the whole corporate side of things. And it just felt like it was more about profits over people. I got some really good experiences, got some really good relationships, got a best friend out of it as well but um, I just knew it wasn't something I wanted to do long term. I wanted to focus on people's health and hopefully not have them go down the same path as my parents because the top two killers in the US are cancer and heart disease, heart, be heart disease being number one. So those are directly impacted by my parents or my parents were directly impacted by that. And so that was kind of my journey from the past standpoint. And then I moved to Vegas in 2013 for work with PepsiCo went to a green smoothie class, started learning about whole food nutrition, and then went to a natural solutions class, started learning about plant-based therapies, and then since then I've been doing what I'm doing now full-time uh, since 2014, and I have a company, it's a health and wellness company called Eduvite, and it's Latin for education is life, and there's a number of different products and services that I offer online and locally, books, coaching, videos, membership sites, a lot of different things to just empower people. You know, I saw a, a little flyer uh, at Sprouts and one of their core values, they had mentioned that empowerment was one of them, but they had something that was really interesting right next to that word and it was an equal sign. And it said empowerment equals agility. And I was like, hmm, that sounds really interesting. I've never thought about empowerment as a form of agility. When I think about agility, it's the ability to move and adapt to your situations because you have all the tools or resources necessary to kind of conquer that situation. And so for me, my goal is to empower people so they can become agile with regards to the challenges and obstacles that they have in their life so they can hop, jump over, go around, break through those things and not go down the same path as my parents. And for me, my goal is just to reduce my own risk for that, um, for those health issues and just empower people to help them be more agile. That's really cool. I mean, empowerment equals agility. That's yeah. the first time I've heard that too, but yeah. definitely has a deeper meaning to that. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to take you back, because um, you said that you went to a green smoothie class. And I think um, there's a difference between being interested in health and seeing as something you enjoy doing or even maybe promoting to your um, immediate circle mm -hmm. versus you know what I gotta do this and I'm actually gonna make a living doing this helping as many people as I can where was that pivotal moment for me yeah yeah I think it was I just read a quote I'm, I'm reading Jack Canfield's book of uh, the success principles and I'm gonna paraphrase the quote that he was quoting from Ken Blanchard but basically it said that 
when you're interested in something, you only do it if it's convenient. But if you're committed to something, you don't make excuses, you just focus on results. And for me, um, when I think about that quote, I think about that moment where I was in that class at the Green Smoothie class and she was just talking about all of the things and how a green smoothie can help you. It can help you with losing weight, it can help you with energy, digestion, it can help you reduce your risk of disease because there's antioxidants, there's nutrients, there's vitamins, there's minerals, there's a lot of things and it's low calorie, high nutrient density. And so for me, I was just like all these things and the way that she presented it, um, I was just like, wow, this is really informative. Nobody has broken it down like this before me in such a clear and concise way that makes sense. And that was my journey actually of becoming vegan as well. So I learned about that, started doing green smoothies, and then shortly after just started learning about stuff during, during uh, documentaries online, Netflix, YouTube, and then I just became vegan in probably 2014 was the time frame. So I've been vegan since then, and um, it's been a cool journey. It's just, you know, a, a lot of, and I, I think for me, I had to realize that there's three things that helped me be successful in my plant-based journey, which is number one, getting the education. I'm very fact-based. I want the truth. I don't want to BS. And so the way that it was presented and the resources that I was given as a result, she had a book called The Green Smoothie Diet, um, but there was a lot of fact-based information that was given, and I needed that um, to really build my why and my belief system. And then number two, I had to surround myself with like-minded individuals. Jim Rohn says that you're an average of the five people you spend the most time with. So for me, I had to get rid of the people from my previous job that were saying, oh, you're going to eat some cardboard and grass today? You know, like that would make fun of me because of my, the way I eat and surround myself with people that were like, hey, how can I help you become a better version of yourself? And how can we rise like a lifting tide that lifts all boats to help each other make each other better and, and grow personally and, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally, all these areas. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's the people I want in my life. And so I had to change my crew and then the third thing I had to do is find replacements for things and so that class really kind of set the stage for all of this um, and when I say replacements for things it's like if I like if I was eating hamburgers before how do I eat black bean burgers mm -hmm. if I was eating wheat how do I go to gluten-free right. if I was eating you know if I was doing sodas coffees and energy drinks how do I do green smoothies mm -hmm. you know and I found replacements for everything you can think of and so was it easy no but with the first two things, education and the right people in my life, it became a lot easier to be a lifestyle, not a diet, not a fad, a lifestyle. And I think that's um, where most people fail too because they, let's say they go online, they listen to the show, they learn, oh, this is bad, glyphosate is bad, GMO is bad, non-organic's bad, processed food's bad. Right. But then you start removing things from your list and you have a void, like what do I fill this with? Like what's, oh my God, help me out, right? Because mm -hmm. they don't know what to eat. What you were saying was you start replacing like one for one. Okay, instead of this, well, I'm gonna do this instead. Yeah. Instead of that, I'm gonna do this instead. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think that's a, a, a one of the key components for a successful habit change. That's you gotta, right. You gotta know intuitively like what are you gonna replace it with otherwise your brain would go um, bananas and it would resort back to what it was um, doing or what it knew yeah. to do yeah it's healthy replacements definitely yeah you also wrote a book yeah <laughs> tell me about that yeah I wrote a book I worked on it for six months it was probably based on six years of my life uh, previously but it's called the 30-day guide to reducing stress at work and it's about 74 pages and the longest chapter is two pages. So it's already reducing stress right there. And yeah, it was just, it's a really quick and easy read. I actually put it on Amazon. I got a audio version, got digital versions, paperback version, Kindle version. And it was a project that I did from start to finish. And I, I made it because I had a lot of stress in my previous job. And 75 to 90% of doctor visits are due to stress. And so for me, I wanted to give a resource to people based on my learnings and give them something that kind of summarizes a lot of the recommendations I give to people. Because um, whether it's emotional stress or cellular oxidative stress, stress is the cause of almost any health issue or disease you can think of. And so it's so important to 
be aware of and manage those well from an emotional and cellular standpoint. So that book covers that in great detail. Right, right. Let's let's talk more about that because I'm sure listeners or watchers out there can relate to you because I imagine you sit at a desk in a corporate environment and lots of stress. Yeah. What do you do to help reduce stress? What are some of the go over some of the natural um, methods or different mm -hmm. ways that, that you did and you teach other people to reduce stress. Yeah, yeah. In the book, it's kind of designed for each day is a chapter. So day one is chapter one, and it's two pages. So, uh, But yeah, so some of the techniques that you can do and that I do, um, it's kind of handling before stress, during stress, and after stress. So how do we handle stress as it happens? Um, and the, one of the first steps is actually trying to build, I call it like your emotional intelligent muscle. And what you want to do, Daniel Goleman talks about being able to when you feel like if somebody cuts me off on the road, then I feel some type of way. So number one, I need to acknowledge the feeling. I feel upset. I feel angry. I feel disappointed. I feel frustrated. Then I need to identify why I feel that way. Okay, I feel that way because this person cut me off. And then I need to find a healthy, better alternative in the future. Or now, instead of flicking them off, I probably should breathe in, breathe out. Or I should you know, not even think about it. Or I, another technique is to align expectations in reality. It doesn't mean lower my standards, but it means expect that people will cut me off. Just that expectation. Now when it happens, it's like, oh, I got my cut off or somebody cut me off for the day that met my quota, you know, almost. And so there's a lot of little, whether it's expectations, emotional intelligence, breathing exercises, um, so I can also exercise to help release endorphins and release that stress and steam. Um, eating more whole foods also helps with managing my mood so I'm not cranky or I don't have mood swings or I don't have digestive upset. You know, so if I'm not taking care of my health and I'm very acidic, got a lot of inflammation, I could take that out on others or my body's telling me that, hey, don't use me until you fix me. Oh, wait, you're trying to use me for driving and other things? Well, if something happens, that could be the straw that breaks the camel's back, and I'm going to set you off because your mental state's not where it needs to be. You're, you're you know, deficient in nutrients. You're deficient in minerals. You're deficient in what you need. So anything could set you off now. And so I have to take care of my body in a lot of different ways. And it sounds like a lot. It's really not. I mean, we have to eat every day. Why not make each meal count? We have to breathe every day. Why not have a breathing exercise that you can do? We have emotions every day. Why not be more aware of them? We, we have to walk every day if you have your feet. Why not run or do some type of exercise that's intentional in the weight room or you know, outside or something? So it's really nothing different or out of the way. It's just very intentional, I'd say, with regards to all of the things that I mentioned in the book. That's really cool. I think we found a theme for this podcast is healthy <laughs> replacement. Yeah, there you right? go. Does whatever you're doing already, replace it with something better or piggyback, piggyback off yeah. of it. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have your own routine as far as stress management, something that you do on a regular basis, a few times a week or even daily yeah. to help reduce your own stress? Yes, so I drink a lot of water in the morning to hydrate. Helps with blood flow, concentration. There you go, some water. I choose glass or stainless steel. Try to avoid BPA, but <laughs> BPA right here. If it's BPA free, <laughs> then that's cool. Um, better than nothing. But yeah, and then I take supplements in the morning: whole food supplements, vitamins, minerals, omega threes, some antioxidant supplements as well. I use some different type of plant-based therapies, um, and really just focus on doing a green smoothie in the morning mm. every morning. Part of my routine now so in, a lot of people eat breakfast with cereal or eggs and bacon or I mean those are all cooked foods oftentimes acidic void of nutrients so a green smoothie is plant-based raw has a ton of nutrients and so I'm giving my body what it needs mm. easy on the digestion and yeah so those are just kind of some mini lifestyle things that I do right work out I only work out like once a week I right. would like to work out more uh -huh. uh, but because I eat so healthy, my body's able to maintain the results really well. So that's also a, a bonus. So the better you eat and take care of yourself, the better your results can be maintained from the weight room or attained, you know, so you can get those results a little bit better too. Right, right. And it's not 
I feel like what I'm gathering from you is, is not just this one giant thing that you do that changes everything. It's more like little things here, little things there, and it all adds up due to the, um, the law of compounding. Yes. Right? And, and some people may see what I do as overwhelming, mm -hmm. but that's because they're trying to fit their circle peg into my square hole and be like, it doesn't fit. What you have to realize is what was that, how was that square hole made? How, you know, what can make it fit? And how much time are you willing to give it? What are you willing to sacrifice or give up over time? Because I didn't get to this overnight, this lifestyle, this wellness lifestyle overnight. It took me a few years. But I slowly improved my quality of life, enhanced it, swapped out bad things or not so good things and put in great things or awesome things over time many years mm. and now it's just about maintaining my quality of life so what I did to get well I need to do to stay well so it's about maintaining attain and maintain right and then if I want to up level it more then you know there may be a law of diminishing returns at some point with quality of life but I do need to just try to maintain the high quality of life I have now from a health standpoint and I say when I say health I mean mental health physical health emotional health spiritual health it could be financial health there's a lot of different healths. So it's important for me to be balanced, not lopsided. I mean, there's lots of CEOs and other people who are on antidepressants. Their kids don't know their name and their wife, and they're cheating on their wife or doing something crazy. And I'm just like, wow. Like, but yet they make millions of dollars, and their CEO got the title. And it's like, that's not the life I ever wanted to live, and I don't want right. to live. I want to live a life of balance and meaningfulness and purpose and something that just adds a lot of value to people's lives. Right, definitely. Like, they might be really uh, excelling in the financial yes. world, but relationships are down here, mm -hmm. health is down here, mm -hmm. you know, emotional health mm -hmm. is down here, spiritual health is down here. Yeah. So, you, you gotta pick what's right for you. And, and, you know, I think it's important to realize that you can, you can essentially have it all. You, with proper tools and steps and actions, you can have it all yeah and yeah. for that CEO that's making a ton of money but having all those other issues with relationships or health or whatever it is and taking drugs for it or you know think of doing a lot of crazy stuff what if their wealth would have grown slower but their health maybe would have mm -hmm. rise risen a little bit as the financial was going or the relationship deepened with people that you know really added value to each other but the finances didn't go up as much or as high as quick mm -hmm. and so I believe health is wealth and I think so. I think that in that case the, their money probably go further because they, it it's more valuable to be able to things to do things for your family your friends or your loved ones or you know things like that where right. in fact they're probably not going to be around as long to enjoy the money yeah so you talk about the combination of mindset, skill set, and tool set. Mm -hmm. You gotta have those three you mentioned mm -hmm. to be successful. Can you expand on that a bit? Yes. So your mindset would be what you believe okay. and what you think about yourself. And that could be everything from you stub your toe is the first thing that comes out your mouth a cuss word, or is it you know like, wow, how do how do I find a solution for this? You know. That's really hard. It, yes, right? It, it, <laughs> that's a very practical way to think about it. But, it sure is. But it could be everything, you know, if you get in a car accident or somebody, you know, cheats on you or, you know, or your health deteriorates. You know, what do we do with regards to our mindset? What do we believe? What's our why, ultimately? And my why is has to do with my parents' health and me not wanting to go down their path and wanting to reach a million people with my message of health and wellness and that lifestyle of prevention and, and everything like that. Um, so and then skill set has to do with what you learn mm -hmm. that could be communication skills that could be how you I mean <laughs> I feel like conflict resolution is one of those things that I, I read a book it was called how to solve your people problems by Alan Godwin and he talked about the reasonable person focuses on the truth and understanding and the unreasonable person focuses on winning and being right and so for me I was like, wow, I want to be a reasonable person that people want to hang around with, want to be with, want to converse with, even when there's problems. Because honeymoon phases with any type of business or romantic or friendship relationship is going to be there. But what about the times where they're tough? 
What about when there's conflict and disagreements? How do we handle those? I want to be the reasonable person in those situations. That's not focused on winning and being right, but it's focused on the truth and understanding and finding solutions, not focusing on the problem and blaming things. Another key thing that he mentioned about people who are unreasonable is that they have trouble admitting wrongness. Mm. Whereas a reasonable person owns what's theirs or owned what they were responsible for and focus on a solution. And so I'm very big on owning my part and taking care of what I am responsible of, whether I allowed something to happen or I what had a hand in it. And so when I mention skill set, we have to have that those skills to deal with conflict and know how to handle all those. That what I just mentioned was all kind of like principles and theories and stuff, but when something happens, what do I do? If somebody calls me an F word or you know, insults my name on a YouTube comment, calls me stuff I can't repeat here on camera because they disagree with what I'm doing, what's my response? And so my skill set is to take a screenshot of their comment and then make a video about it where I react to it in a respectful and a little bit funny way, but still answer the questions that they had. And so, and I point them to my other videos too in there. And so that's my reaction to their reaction, which is more of a response because I'm being more respectful, but but I don't cuss them out, I don't call them out their name, and I, I have fun with it a little bit. I put like scary music when I'm reading their comment. So, you know, like the slasher music, like ring, ring, ring. So, um, but yeah, just to be like, okay, you clearly were set off by what I said because they have, you know, a disagreement with what I said, but, um, <laughs> but it's cool, it's fun. Um, and then, so tool set is what tools do I have to be successful? That could be books. That could be you know, resources, computer, phone, camcorder. What, what tools do I have? Whether that be even like workshop dates or conferences or conventions that I could go to to help me develop my skills and my belief system. And so I have a awesome, and that's also like video editing, for me, video editing programs or other types of things to do screen captures. I just mentioned I could capture the screen, but what program do I use? So you know, there's a lot of little things that I do and have, and you know, YouTube is a tool set for me. They have lots of great creator university educational tools that I feel like is thousands of dollars worth of value, but they give away for free for creators. Mm -hmm. So it's awesome. And those are kind of what I think about when I when I hear mindset and right. what I mentioned in the book about skill set and, and tool set. That's really cool. It's got to start with the belief or the mindset. Yes. Because I know a lot of people who start out with the tool set go buy the gym equipment, they had a good intention, they were interested in getting in better shape, yeah. but they started the wrong place. They started the tool set yeah. without the mindset, so they didn't really believe that they were going to do that, first of all, and they probably didn't learn proper ways to do it, but they just went and got a gym bag, and now they failed. Yeah, and, and what if their why for doing it was convenience or looking good so I can get compliments? Vanity. Yeah, yeah, vanity, which could be a good motivator for some people, especially if you get paid to do that and you're a model or you're an you know, actor or actress or whatever. But what if your reason was deeper? What if your reason was like, hey, all of my family members have died because they did not take care of their health and they lived a sedentary lifestyle of inactivity and I don't want to go down that path. I was in the hospital with my mom when this happened, and my hospital with my dad when this happened, and my hospital with my grandma and my grandpa, and they didn't have a will, and it caused this and this and this and this, and they were like, I don't ever want to have anybody that I care about have to go through that with me. So I'm going to take care of my health today, and this is one thing I'm going to do, which is you know, exercise consistently. Mm -hmm. That's the mindset. And then the skill set is, how do I be reliable with it? How do I be responsible with this? How do I get an accountability partner? How do I communicate when I'm frustrated or going through challenges? Or, you know, like, how do I deal with conflict? Or, oh, I have a meeting or I have work. Forget working out. No, how do I organize my time and my schedule so I can prioritize things? Or and, do it correctly without oh, hurting yourself. That too, yeah, proper right. form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get a trainer. Like, those are mm -hmm. skills, I would say, in, in a sense where you have to know how to research or seek those out and actually do them but yeah and so yeah there's a, there's a lot more to it and, um, and and this is where it becomes overwhelming for people a lot of times because they're like well I don't want to, have to think about mindset and so just let me do it and I'm like well my goal is to help you be successful you have to you know, you know do it a little bit at a time but I don't want to I want it today 
well, I understand that because in an instant gratification society where in the past it took probably a week to send that letter on horseback to somebody and a week to get that message back and now you can get a message like in an instant and if somebody doesn't respond back to you in two to four hours you think they're locked up in a closet or cheating on you or doing something crazy and it's like well hold on our expectations have changed right. where two weeks was the the lead time from the moment you let that letter release in your hands to now we're just you know we think the world's coming to an end if we don't get a response in two hours so mm. two weeks to two hours you <laughs> know right. so that's what I mean by mindset too. We have to be aware of those things. If we're not, then it's like, and I'm, I don't do it perfectly. I fail on those things, but I'm aware of it though, and I own what's mine, and that's the best thing I can do. I think you mentioned that you help other people successfully reach their health goals. Yeah. I think there's a good segue into that where I want to ask you what factor, and we may have covered this already, or what is the most important factors that differentiate those who fail mm. versus those who succeed and su- you know succeed fast? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and maybe give some example if you may. Yeah, I think the <laughs> the perfect example is my sister, who will go unnamed, but she knows who she is. <laughs> so my sister lives in a five hundred thousand dollar house that's paid off. She has a husband that's an airline pilot, makes six Six figures figures a year. She just bought her daughter a new BMW for her 16th birthday, for her first car. And when she talked to me, she was like, hey, my son is going through a lot of digestive issues. Can you hook me up with the family discount? Can you hook me up? And I was like, well, I can give you the services and products that I offer at the normal rate, and she was like, hold on, I thought we're family. I'm like, we are, but you, I'm not going to give special favors or favoritism just because you're a family. You will get the same love that I give to everyone, which is a lot of love. <laughs> so, and she basically did not make a move. She was like, I'm not going to take natural solutions for my son's health because you're not going to give me what I want and how I want it. And she also said that she didn't want to spend that much on her health or her son. She said, I don't want to spend that much. I gave her a price quote. I don't want to spend that. And it wasn't that much. Keep in mind all the other things I mentioned that she has. She's got a lot of, she's financially secure. Let's just put it that way. Very financially secure. And so the, when you ask what makes people successful or not, number one, do they have an identified pain point? Is there something that they say, yes, my son has digestive issues, or I have stress, yes. Because I meet a number of people, a minority of people, but a, a, number of people, a number of people when I ask, hey, do you have any health concerns? They say, no. And I'm like, you don't have stress? No. You don't have digestion issues? No. Sleep issues? No. Energy issues? No. Take any medications? Yeah, I take blood pressure and cholesterol medication. I'm like, no health issues? No. I'm like, Either we're in a river in Egypt called denial or, you know, like, what's going on here? But um, so they have to have an identified pain point. <laughs> Maybe because they don't understand that those are health issues. Those because are. they were educated yeah. in the wrong paradigm where, hey, there's a, every pill for every ill. You take this and you're healthy without yeah. common sense, of course. Yeah, I think people think health issue is did you have a heart attack or do you have cancer? No, that's called disease. Do you have a disease? I didn't ask, do you have a disease? I asked, do you have a health issue? Something that keeps you up at night, something that you spend money on over the counter prescription, something that reduces your work productivity, causes you oxidative or emotional stress, something, you know. We all have health issues, basically, is the point I'm trying to make. It's just to what degree, how often, and are you willing to admit it or not? Now, the second thing that determines people's success is are they motivated to change? So it's one thing to say, hey, I, I want to do it. Are you going to talk about it or are you going to be about it? My sister talked about it. She didn't be about it. She wasn't about that life of wellness. Yet she's the same one that will go to a doctor and get antibiotics or prescription drugs or other stuff. So she's going to spend her money somewhere. But yet it wasn't through something that was natural. And then the third thing would be, are they looking for something better? So that's kind of tied to the motivated one, but are they looking for something better? Yes, she was looking, 
And that's why she called me and asked me some questions. But the fourth thing that I mentioned is probably the most important and it has to do with the mindset. And is do they have an investor mindset or do they have an, a limited belief system? What I mean by that is an investor mindset is the same where if you're like, hey, I have $100,000, Lance, you're a financial advisor, I'm gonna invest this with you in a year, can I get $110,000, maybe get 10%, you know, beat inflation? And I'd be like, I'm a financial advisor, I got all these years under my belt, market's pretty good, I can do that for you. So I will take your money and give you $110,000 back, so 10% return. That's an investor mindset. A limited belief system says, hey, this is gonna cost me $100,000. This is an expense that I don't wanna incur. I don't care how much of a return it is. I don't even know if I'm gonna get a return. I know there's no risk without a reward, but I'm just not willing to leave, give my money to somebody that's credible, a financial advisor, when the market conditions are good or bad or whatever it is, but I just it's too much of an expense. Even though I have my house paid off and you know everything else is good, but limited belief system says that this is an expense. This is an additional cost. This is something that I'm not already gonna spend money on anyway, yet that same person is gonna drop $100,000 on real estate and then be like, oh, well, yeah, real estate's good. And it's just like, well, hold on, you just, you have the money, you just, anyway. So they, they have that limited belief system that doesn't allow them to make a decision. So if I could summarize, it's you got to basically have a pain point. You have to be motivated to change. You have to be looking for something better and you have to have an investor mindset. And those are my clients that have seen the best success. If you're missing one, two, three, or all those things, then it doesn't guarantee your long-term success. No, that's really good summary. Do you help people, let's say, if they're missing number two and three? You, do you help them have that, or do they have to come to you with the all four? If somebody has zero of those, then what I do is ask questions and educate to help see, because they may say, I don't have any health concerns, but I'd be like, do you struggle with sleep? No. Energy? No. Digestion? No. Cold and flu? Yeah, sometimes. Okay, how often do you get cold? And then we have a conversation, mm -hmm. and I figure out that. So they went from, no, I don't have any health concerns, to, yeah, I kind of get that every once in a while. I, I, wouldn't, I would like to not have that as much, or not be as severe, or not have to go to the doctor for it, or da 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 da, da. so that's cool. We have a conversation. And then, yeah, so every one of those points, I, I help them. I'd be like, okay, so you're not really motivated to make a decision. You don't want to make any sacrifices right now. You don't want to replace what you're spending on antibiotics or over-the-counter with something natural. But how much do you spend on antibiotics and other stuff that's over-the-counter? Oh, I don't know. Could you look? Maybe it's your bank statement. Oh, yeah, I probably spend about $500 a year. Oh, so you already spend money on that. Okay. Could you allocate a budget to the natural side for things that would replace, not additional costs, replace what that was? Maybe, or no, or yes. So every little thing can be managed through questions and education. And so that's my approach to help. I don't give cookie cutter solutions, although there are a number of health issues that people oftentimes have, and so I can provide you know, pretty standard recommendations, A, B, C especially if A doesn't work or B doesn't work, then you have C, and then I can go to D, E, F if you know, need be. But yeah, so it's just building relationships, becoming somebody that people know, like, and trust, and helping them when they're ready. When they're ready. I mean, the most common thing that I say is, like, if you're gonna make a decision, you need to identify what your health concerns are. You have to have some type of budget for it, and then you have to think about the timing of it. Do you wanna get started today, tomorrow, next week, next year? but I encourage people not to procrastinate with their health because Murphy's Law likes to pop up when you least expect it, which basically says anything that could, could go wrong will go wrong. And that could apply to your health or other things, finances. So, um, and that's why I also focus a little bit on financial education. My YouTube channel will have that. Even though it's not a popular top topic per se, or it's something maybe my audience is not used to, but it's still very important. If you don't take care of your health, then you have more financial exp expenses if you don't take care of your finances, you won't be able to pay for the things that can take care of your health. So it's this vicious circle, or it can be a circle of life. It's just how you look at it, mindset. So I'm, I'm very big on mindset. I think everything starts there. What you think becomes you know, what you say, what you say becomes what you do. So, and Tony Robbins is big in saying that thoughts are things. Thoughts are things. What you think becomes what you 
things in your life. You end up manifesting it. Yeah. Good or bad. Yeah, you either attract the good or the bad or, yeah, based on what you think. So, so yeah, I, I think that I'm more of like a, a facilitator of health and, you know, the educator aspect of it, instructor. Just kind of, everyone has the answer. I'm just helping them pull it out. Yeah. That's good. When they're ready. When they're ready. I don't ever force. I don't pressure. I don't hard sell. I don't do anything of that. Just all attraction marketing. Just here's who I am. Here's what I'm about. You're either about that life or you're not. If you're not ready, cool. You know where I'm at. We need YouTube. You know, I got, you know, assets and books and stuff that you can read. Um, but if not, hey, you know, change the channel. <laughs> so, you can go somewhere else. <laughs> really cool. Really cool. Yeah. Well, we're gonna start to wrap things up here shortly. Okay. Cool. Can you tell us um, where can people find you? Yes. So you can find me on YouTube by Googling Lance McGowan or going into YouTube search and typing in Lance McGowan. Or you can go to my website, lancemcgowan.com, and learn about my book and the other products and services that I offer when it comes to, I should probably be looking at this camera, <laughs> when it comes to actually handling stress in the work at, workplace. But yeah, that'll be really great, and that is an awesome resource. So lancemcgowan.com or on YouTube, Lance McGowan are the two best ways to stay connected or learn more about what I do. Great. The name of the show is called The Wellness Cafe. Mm -hmm. I like to offer a term wellness to you. What does that mean for you? You like to offer a term of wellness? Um, if I offer the term, the wellness, uh, if I offer the term wellness to you, what does that mean? Oh, what does wellness mean? Uh, it means, I think true wellness means freedom. It means you can have the quality of life you want and from a very practical standpoint, it means three things. It means being able to post, it means living longer, and maybe extending your life seven to 12 years. That's number one. It means, number two, prolonging when chronic disease happens. And it also means, number three, shortening the amount of time that that chronic disease lasts. So if I can go from 60 years old life expectancy to 100, and instead of chronic disease hitting me when I'm 50, if I can postpone it till I'm 90, and instead of it lasting the last 10 years of my life, it maybe just lasts the last year of my life, or something along those lines in that analogy, then that would be a really great accomplishment, I think, for true wellness, and, and having as much quality of life all before then. Lance McGowan, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So definitely check out Lance's uh, website at lancemcgowan.com. Also, his YouTube channel is very popular. Also, check out his book. And help Lance meet his dream goal of reaching a million people by sharing this message today.